Hi, Cool Worlders. I'm Brian Metzger, a professor here at Columbia University. And I'm Nick Stone, a postdoctoral researcher also at Columbia University. We're here today to talk to you about Tabby's star, a very mysterious star you've already heard about on past Cool Worlds episodes. What we want to discuss is our theory about what makes Tabby's star so special and what can explain its mysterious appearance. So about a decade ago, NASA launched the Kepler satellite, the mission of which was to monitor about 100,000 stars in our galaxy, searching for very small periodic dips in their light curve produced as planets passed in front of the star. Recently, in an effort led by Tabitha Boyajian, it was discovered that one of these stars behaved very unusually. It produced large erratic dips in its light curve. Up to 20% of the star's light was blocked by something. Clearly not a typical planet. These large amplitude irregular dips in the light curve would be hard enough to explain on their own. But the mystery of Tabby's star deepened further when a group of observers used the archival photographic plates from Harvard University's observatory and found evidence that Tabby's star has decreased in its total brightness by roughly 14% over the last 100 years. These observations were further substantiated by looking at the total data set collected by the Kepler satellite, which found evidence that during the duration of the Kepler mission itself, Tabby's star underwent a slow, gentle decline in its brightness by roughly a few percent. Both this erratic dipping behavior exhibited by Tabby's star, as well as this slow decline in its luminosity over the past century or decade, are both highly unusual phenomena. Montet and Simon observed hundreds of stars surrounding Tabby and found no such similar decline in their luminosities. And likewise, no other stars within the Kepler field show the erratic dipping behavior that Tabby's star exhibits. When you have two highly unusual phenomena, which are both themselves uh, obviously very rare, that strongly suggests through Occam's razor that they're likely connected in some manner. The mysterious behavior of Tabby's star is very challenging to explain with standard models for how exoplanetary systems should behave. And this mystery has been like catnip for theoretical astrophysicists, producing many novel models for exactly how you can get this irregular transiting and dipping behavior in the light curve. The enormous amplitude of some of the dips in Tabby's star's light curve, up to 20%, imply that the material passing between our line of sight and Tabby's star itself is probably not a traditional planet, but rather some sort of extended cloud of dusty debris. One way to produce such an extended dusty debris cloud is by evaporating a comet sort of a, a scaled up version of the cometary tails we see in our own solar system. So one explanation that has been proposed for what's going on with Tabby's star is that what we're witnessing is a swarm of exocomets periodically passing in front of Tabby's star. Unfortunately, this explanation does not do a lot to explain the long-term dimming observed in the light curve of Tabby's star over the last decade and possibly century. A different explanation, which may explain both of the unusual features of this star's light curve, is that what is going on could instead be the passage of a large cloud of interstellar gas between our line of sight and Tabby's star. The slow passage of this cloud in front of Tabby's star would produce a gentle decline in the luminosity of the star over long time scales of decades or centuries. And if there's clumpy material, clumpy overdensities of dust in this interstellar gas cloud, that could explain the short period transits and deeper dips of the Tabby star light curve. However, there have been a flurry of recent observations of Tabby star, which indicate that the transit behavior may be periodic on timescales of roughly two years. Because the interstellar cloud hypothesis invokes obscures which are unrelated to Tabby's star, you would not expect any sort of periodicity in the transit signal produced by this hypothesis. A third possibility, which has received a lot of media attention, and which you can hear about more in past uh, cool, word, cool Worlds videos, is that Tabby's star may actually be uh, home to some sort of alien civilization constructing a megastructure in a way that is producing this unusual behavior. Now, generally speaking, astronomers are reluctant to invoke aliens as the explanation for anything unusual they see in the sky. This is sort of an explanation of last resort only when all more physical or natural models have been exhausted. The, the, the presence of uh, an explanation involving aliens invoked Brian and myself and our collaborator Ken Shen at UC Berkeley to think about whether or not there might be a natural explanation that has been overlooked so far. So what we propose is that decades or centuries ago, Tabby's star was impacted 
by a planet from its own stellar system. This planet likely originated from the very outer regions of the system, perhaps similar to the Kuiper Belt in our old system, and over many orbits was placed closer and closer to Tabby's star. Once it got within a few radii of the star, the very strong gravity tore apart the outer layers of the planet, or possibly tore off its moon system if it had one, and that debris continues to orbit Tabby star, causing the periodic dips that we observe with Kepler. If the idea of a planet crashing into the surface of its star sounds crazy, that's because the planets that we're most familiar with, the planets within our own solar system, orbit our sun on very circular orbits. But astronomers have known, since the 17th century, that orbits don't necessarily have to be circular. They can also be elliptical. In the scenario that we propose, the doomed planet that impacted Tabby's star was excited from an initially circular orbit onto one of ever-increasing ellipticity. As the ellipticity of its orbit increased, its point of closest approach to Tabby's star decreased until its eventual fatal collision with the surface of Tabby's star. Generally speaking, the orbits of planets are fixed, but if they're perturbed by other massive bodies, their orbital properties can change in time. There are hints that Tabby's star is orbited by a distant, dim companion star, a red dwarf sitting further away from Tabby's star than Pluto is from our own sun. The gravitational influence of this distant companion star would slowly perturb the orbits of planets in the Tabby's star system over time, possibly causing them to evolve to higher and higher ellipticity and leading to the fatal encounter that is the basis of our model. So once the bulk of the planet impacts Tabby's star, it begins to feel a very strong frictional drag force and begins to spiral into the center of the star over several orbits. This frictional heating causes the outer layers of the star to become very hot and causes the star to brighten very abruptly in an unobservable event, which as we already discussed happened maybe decades or centuries ago. And then after that point, the star settles down to its original state very slowly. Although the impact of the planet heated the outer layers of Tabby's star quickly, leading to a rapid rise in its brightness, it is only able to radiate away this energy over longer time scales, giving rise to a slow dimming corresponding to the long-term evolution of Tabby's star that we see today. But the rate of decline of Tabby's star's luminosity depends sensitively on the mass of the planet that impacted it in the first place. As you might guess, the bigger the mass of the impactor, the more heat that was deposited in the outer layers of Tabby star, and the longer it takes its light curve to dim and return to the natural luminosity that Tabby star wants to put out. For example, if the original impactor was comparable to the size of Earth's moon, Tabby star would be able to radiate away all of the deposited gravitational energy fairly quickly, its luminosity would decline over a time scale of years. And on the other hand, if the impacting planet was very large, comparable to Jupiter in our own solar system, the impact could have occurred centuries or even millennia ago, and we could still be observing dimming today that is in agreement with observations. As Nick described, the impact of a planet with Tabby star can naturally explain the slow decay of its light curve over the last decade or century. But what about the erratic, short, day timescale dips observed by Kepler? These must be produced in our scenario by debris from the disrupted planet, which continues to orbit Tabby star on a highly elliptical orbit. In order to explain flux drops up to 20% of the star's light, this debris must be extremely radially extended and doesn't represent an actual bound object or planet, but instead a dusty cloud of debris. And given the likelihood that we observed this event, or given the geometry that we observed this event, these transiting events likely happen when the debris is passing closest to Tabby star. Of course, there's still the question of where these eccentric debris streams which produce the transits come from in the first place. And in our paper, we propose two different scenarios to explain their origin. The first of these scenarios, which involves exomoons, is motivated by the possibility that the planet which impacted Tabby's star could be a gas giant, analogous to the massive gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn in our own solar system. Jupiter and Saturn are themselves orbited by a small retinue of icy moons, and if we imagine an exoplanetary analog to these gas giants being excited to orbits of higher and higher ellipticity and smaller and smaller points of closest approach to Tabby's star, then these moons will suffer a very interesting fate. Before their planet impacts Tabby's star directly, the moons will be detached by the gravity of Tabby's star from their orbits around their planetary host and will be placed instead onto very elliptical orbits around Tabby's star itself. 
if these moons are analogous to the satellites of Jupiter and Saturn in our own solar system, their cores are made of rock, but their outer layers are made of much more delicate elements like water and ammonia ice, which exist as solids only at very low temperatures. However, once these moons are detached from their host planet, their elliptical orbits will carry them very close to Tabby's star, with points of closest approach even closer than Mercury's orbit around our own sun. The scorching temperatures experienced by these detached exomoons at their points of closest approach to Tabby's star will lead to violent and massive evaporation of the water and other forms of ice on their surfaces, creating expanding layers of gas and dust evaporating from the exomoons and generating large-scale clouds of gaseous and dusty debris, which could explain the transits that the Kepler satellite observes. So another possibility is if the planet striking Cabby star is a lower mass Earth-like planet or dwarf planet. As it approaches the star, its outer layers, which have lower density than the core of the planet, will first be torn off by the strong gravity of Cabby star, even before the core of the planet impacts its surface and begins to spiral in. So these outer layers of the planet, which are torn off, uh, may recondense into dense clumps, and much as Nick described in the case of exomoons, could be outgassing volatiles and creating a very dense debris cloud blocking the light periodically and explaining the dips observed. So from a theoretical perspective, it seems that our model is capable of explaining most of the unusual phenomenology of Tabby's star. And to our knowledge, it's one of only two theoretical models out there that attempts to explain both unusual features seen in Tabby's star, in the light curve of Tabby's star, the slow long-term decline and the rapid erratic dipping behavior. The other model which attempts to do this is the one we described a few minutes ago, where we have an interstellar cloud of clumpy gas and dust passing in between our line of sight and Tabby's star. Does this mean our model is perfect? Certainly not. And the biggest worry we have about it concerns the issue of rates. Kepler observed roughly 100,000 stars and only saw one star with behavior as weird as Tabby's star. The Kepler satellite was observing only one millionth of the total stellar content of the Milky Way, and that means that in an astronomical sense, Tabby star is not that rare after all, and there should be many other stars like it in the Milky Way. This is problematic for our explanation because we rely on what should be a fundamentally rare event. In order for our model to be right, either the Kepler satellite got very lucky to see uh, a star going such a short-lived phase of stellar system evolution as Tabby's star may be undergoing, or impacts of planets onto their stars may be more common than we had previously thought. Any good theoretical model should make falsifiable predictions. Our model predicts that the debris orbiting Tabby star should be on a highly elliptical orbit. Most of the time it spends very far away from the star, with typical distances greater than the separation between the Earth and the Sun. However, around the time of the dips, it actually passes very close to the star within a few stellar radii. And when it does so, the debris should get very hot and emit infrared radiation. Now in the past, Tabby star has been observed in the infrared and no detections have been made. However, these could have occurred when the debris was very far away and cold from the star and therefore would be undetectable. So the observations must be taken around the time of the dimming. The recent discovery that Tabby star started dimming again a few weeks ago uh, is a strong indication that these observations may now be taken and we may finally be able to test the model. So that's the quick summary of the theoretical model we've proposed to explain this very puzzling object. Thanks for listening, and if you thought this was interesting, you should check out other Cool Worlds videos about Tabby Star, and pay attention to the news because there are a lot of ongoing observational campaigns to understand it better, and this is a mystery that is very much still unresolved. So to wrap everything up, we're not saying it was aliens, but we're actually really not saying it was aliens. It probably was not aliens. And begins to spiral into the center, similar to the way that dirt spirals around a water drain. <laughs> yeah, I, I know this analogy is not... Oh, okay, okay, we can come up with a different analogy. <laughs> In spiral into to, to a toilet doesn't okay uh, toilet bowls to the center. Uh, uh, Let's not do a toilet bowl, <laughs> which causes it to spiral into the center of the star, similar to the way that your kids' Cheerios spiral into spiral into the water drink, kitchen drink, water drink. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, I'm just I'm just gonna keep spiraling. We don't need to give okay, an analogy. Okay, no analogy. Uh, okay, no analogy.